Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Kessler, a consultant specializing in science communication. It's Friday, October 21st, and it's time for your Fusion News update. Stories today include, one, UK AEA and Tokamak Energy to collaborate on commercial fusion. Two, will fusion energy help decarbonize the power system? Three, wave of fusion energy experiments begin with groundbreaking machine. Four, a new solution to one of the major problems of fusion research. Five, upgraded materials research facility empowers fusion research. Six, nuclear fusion. Why Silicon Valley is betting on man-made star power and the biological theory that explains why investors are bullish on fusion. I also have some bonuses for you at the end, so stick around. One, UK AEA and Tokamak Energy to collaborate on commercial fusion. Last week, the UK Atomic Energy Authority and Fusion Industry Association member Tokamak Energy announced a five-year agreement for a collaborative work towards commercial fusion energy using spherical tokamaks. This agreement is an example of the public-private partnerships that will likely be a major driver in the fusion industry. Spherical tokamaks use toroidal magnetic confinement, but design the center donut hole to be as small as possible, creating a nearly spherical plasma. Mast upgrade, operated by the UK AEA and ST40, Tokamak Energy's experimental device, are both spherical tokamaks. The UK's planned facility demonstration power plant, the spherical tokamak for energy production, STEP, was discussed in last week's Fusion News after a final siting determination was made. The UK AEA and Tokamak Energy will work together to share ideas, staff, and technology to attack challenges associated with future fusion power generation, including materials, fuel cycle, and more. According to the CEO of Tokamak Energy, Chris Kelsall, we are in a race against time to phase out the world's reliance on fossil fuels and aim to deliver fusion as a clean, sustainable, low cost and globally available energy source. Tokamak Energy and UK AEA jointly recognize the importance of collaboration to accelerate the delivery of commercial fusion. Two, will fusion energy help decarbonize the power system? This article from the consulting firm McKinsey & Company looks at the role of fusion as a dispatchable power source in a future zero carbon energy landscape. Many carbon-free power sources are non-dispatchable energy or variable renewable energy. The amount of power produced varies based on external parameters, such as wind. Fusion power could serve as a major source of baseload green energy in a future zero carbon grid. The piece lays out what has changed to make fusion a more viable energy project, including advances in technology and increased investment, and what still needs to change, including demonstrations of new system subcomponents and the creation of a robust regulatory framework. Overall, this piece is an interesting perspective on both the potential of and the challenges facing fusion energy. Three, wave of fusion energy experiments begin with groundbreaking machine. The joint European Taurus, JET, recently began another round of experiments, as reported by Newsweek. This comes after their record-breaking demonstration last fall, where the deuterium tritium plasma produced 56 megajoules over the course of five seconds. JET is the only magnetic fusion device currently operating with tr tritium fuel, which allows the opportunity to study more realistic fusion plasmas. Most devices operate with only deuterium fuel due to safety, regulatory, and tritium supply constraints. This set of experiments will start with helium discharges to observe the effects of helium on the beryllium-coated tungsten walls of JET. In a burning deuterium-tritium plasma, the helium produced will play a major role in the plasma surface interactions, especially in the exhaust portion of the device, the diverter. Testing the effects on the beryllium-coated first walls will offer important insights for future operations at ITER. Dr. Tim Luce, ITER's head of science and operations said, an essential element is to explore control of the plasma interaction with the wall at high fusion temperatures. We have great expectations for how these experiments can help us optimize our plan to move as efficiently as possible into deuterium-tritium operation. Additionally, JET was featured last week in a National Geographic piece entitled, Many Scientists See Fusion as the Future of Energy, and They're Betting Big. It discusses the UK, AEA, and JET, but also mentions Fusion Industry Association members Tokamak Energy, First Light Fusion, and General Fusion. Four, a new solution to one of the major problems of fusion research. This article at phys.org reports on a paper recently published in Physical Review Letters, showing findings from experiments and simulations studying edge localized modes, or ELMS. This is a type of disruption in a fusion plasma that could be incredibly destructive in a large tokamak if not properly controlled. 
and finding stable modes of operation for a toroidal plasma is a major focus of plasma physics research for fusion. These researchers were able to show that by creating a mode that allows small, non-destructive elms to occur, larger, damaging elms were prevented. This was achieved through controlling the shape of the plasma. Instead of resembling a large D, the plasma is shaped more like a rounded triangle. Lydia Radovanovic, one of the paper's authors, said of the findings, At first, this was thought to be a scenario that only occurs in currently running smaller machines, such as Aztec's upgrade. However, with new experiments and simulations, we have now been able to show the regime can prevent dangerous instabilities, even in parameter ranges foreseen for reactors. Five, upgraded materials research facility empowers fusion research. A 10 million pound extension of the UK AEA materials research facility, MRF, was recently completed. The facility is now nearly doubled in size with much more equipment and space to conduct experiments on and characterization of fusion relevant materials. This type of facility is incredibly valuable to fusion research as the effects of the harsh environment created by the temperatures required for and the neutrons produced by fusion are not yet fully understood. In particular, materials that have been irradiated by neutrons are slightly radioactive immediately after exposure and they need to be studied in controlled environments. MRF is designed for exactly these type of materials and will hopefully continue to help researchers learn more about this important area of fusion research. Six, nuclear fusion, why Silicon Valley is betting on man-made star power, and the biological theory that explains why investors are bullish on fusion. This pair of articles discusses the reasons for and possible success of recent investments in fusion energy. The Fusion Industry Association and some of its members, Commonwealth Fusion Systems, Helion Energy, TAE Technologies, and Zap Energy are all mentioned. The articles cover the basic challenges of fusion, cost, fuel sourcing, nuclear stigma, but also show how recent advances and new technology could overcome many of these issues, particularly the use of high temperature superconductors. The first article draws an interesting parallel between the evolutionary concept of punctuated equilibrium and the current rapid growth of the fusion industry. The author posits that similar to large ecological events that cause a sudden onset of speciation, a set of converging technological advances, including high temperature superconductors, fast transistors, and machine learning have led to a sudden onset of new fusion ventures. Finally, check out the bonus fusion news this week, including additional YouTube videos, a fusion primer, and an interview. First, two YouTube videos. We tried to build a nuclear fusion reactor and a presentation from Professor Ian Chapman. In the first video, Helion Energy helps a journalist and an engineer build a demonstration fusion. And part two should also be on its way soon. The second video is an hour long presentation from UK AEA CEO, Professor Ian Chapman on the pathway towards fusion power. We also have what to know about fusion, which is an article on the basics of fusion. And for our more intense viewers, Commonwealth Fusion Systems has recently released on GitHub the in-depth baseline parameters used as the design basis for Spark. The demonstration device CFS is building in collaboration with MIT. And finally, check out this interview with First Light Fusion. That's all for Fusion News this week. Stay tuned for our next update. Please like and subscribe for more Fusion News and check out the links in the description if you want further information.